I mean, I'm gonna blow that sucker. Looks pretty good, don't you think? I think that looks, I think that looks pretty nice. Hello once again, and welcome to the channel. My name is Uncle Jake. That man over there, is the venerable, is that the right word, venerable? Dr. Sure, Burke? let's call me venerable. I'm not even sure what that means, but I we'll think it's good. <laughs> Today, we're installing yet another light that was sent to us. This one's kind of cool. You remember the last video, if you didn't check it out, it was those four inch lights from Auto Saver 88 that we installed, that they sent us, and they've given us one more to try out. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Okay, so they actually asked us to do this review, and then I asked them if I could pick the light out, and so I picked the four for the Raptor. <laughs> That's to keep me on track. This one is pretty cool because it's curved. And as I say, I got to pick one out. So it's got the three rows of LED. These are all spotlights. That should be a lot of spot. And then it's got uh, on both ends, a floodlight. So I think that's kind of cool because it gives you all in one. I was like, you know what, if I can pick, especially with my four wheeler, I'd like to be able to see a far away and up close. The price on these guys too is really impressive. This is under 50 bucks. And the ones we put on the Raptor, the two, we put four of the four and you can get a pack of two for under 20 bucks. And we have a discount code that makes it even better. But let me show you what we're trying to do here. So the problem that I have is while these are pretty darn good, these are LED. Dr. Tor got us these, which are really cool because you see how the LEDs go all the way around the sides and in the front. That's important because a lot of times these LEDs, when you buy them, only have lights on both sides and it puts a weird pattern. So Dr. Torque did us a real nice favor on those. However, the bright light on this is right here. And of course I have this particular device that usually blocks that. So what I want to do is install this light right here and tie it in with the high beams on the four-wheeler so that way I can turn it off. So I don't destroy people that might I might meet in the woods <laughs> coming around the corner or something. So that's our plan. We're going to figure out how to mount this, but it pretty much has to go on this hood or this cover, which folds up. So it's going to have to miss this when it tilts. And then we got to figure out how to wire it into the switch. But that's the plan. So we're gonna kind of play with this and figure it out and then we'll get back when we're ready to mount this sucker. So let's get to work. So when you do this, of note, on this particular kit, there are two different length bolts. I, I didn't pay attention to that at first. And if you put in the longer ones here, it doesn't go in all the way. The longer ones are meant to go mounting down through something. So when you put these on, you've got like this position locking washer that goes on the inside right there then a uh, flat, then another locking. So on this particular Polaris, uh, this looks like a good mounting spot right there. It goes back past these bumps, see those bumps? So the bracket hits on both sides. And if you're down here looking at this, the lights are just ab above that. So the spotlight should be pretty good, but this is gonna block a little bit. The thing that I'm not worried about that is because I have these lights. Now, typically on this Polaris, this is a 2006, it's, in my opinion, kind of silly. It's one or the other. If you have low beams on, these are on. If you flip it to high, then these go off. However, there is a way that you can buy a little kit, a little wiring kit, pretty simple, to change that so that they're all on at the same time, which if you have bright lights on, why would you not want all of them on at the same time? I couldn't tell you that, so I changed that. And that's why I'm not worried about this because these are gonna be on. That'll give me the flood area right in front, and then this will give me out to the sides, and then this gives me even further forward. And then that light, if I don't have anything here, we'll be fine, right? But if I have something there that's blocked, I don't think I'm gonna care with this light. So now we gotta figure out how to drill through and then seal that because this is a storage compartment and then make sure that when this flips up, it doesn't hit. I don't think it will, but we're gonna check that and then that will be the next step. So let's keep moving. So the next test is, can we open this and will this hit here? I don't even know. I'm not even sure quite how far this lid opens. It's one of those things you never really pay attention to, but <laughs> this one is open, open. Okay, all right, you got that? All right, so let's see. <laughs> you, you couldn't tell that, oh, check that out. That isn't gonna hit any, that isn't even close. So, so that's good. So there's not gonna be a clearance problem when you open this, it'll actually be no problem. Also, as we close this back, just let me close this back. I like this back further. Like I considered maybe mounting it up here, 
But again, because I got the kit that has these on at the same time, I don't really need that. And this keeps it back away from the brush and stuff. So I'm kind of thinking that's a better spot to mount it. So now we need to get to measuring and spacing and evening out and drilling. Let's go. So <laughs> we're measuring the width here and it's gonna hit like right close to that rib. I mean, it's gonna be close. Like, I mean, we may have 3 16 possibly on both sides of this. So I think it will work, but it's gonna require some pretty close measuring. So very precise measurements to, to make this work, to get that to mount. I think it will, but of course, you've got all this massive space and then it, it hits right on that rib. Is that not always the way? But it will not deter us. We shall figure this out. And I, I, I think we can do it if, again, we got to get really close. So we're going to have to do a little bit of measuring and then we're going to drill a tiny hole and make sure that we don't have to adjust that a little bit more for a bigger hole. So um, let's get to measuring. Okay, so this next step, as I say, was measuring and balancing these things out. So what I did was I just first did a visual check on the visual like uh, line these up and see how close that is that side and that side then i like to mark the edges and then measure so we've got some nice marks here it's probably hard to see that little circle but we've checked both sides i've definitely got it even because remember we have hardly any room on that inside so we've marked it double checked it with measurements then when we like that then we marked the circle now we're going to drill a tiny hole very tiny in the center this is really important see that a little bit because if you drill a big hole and then you try to drill another hole that's maybe partially overlapping that it'll slip back into the original hole so you drill a teeny tiny pilot hole tiny make sure it looks good on the inside in case you have to adjust it because then you can move another you can drill another little teeny tiny hole as the pilot hole and then get the big one i hope that makes sense just trust me it's way better than drilling a bigger too big of a pilot hole than you than you're hosed um, and this is plastic anyway, so it's a little bit easier, but so now we're going to drill and hope that it's lined up in the right place. Let's, let's give it a shot. Okay. Well, it's now or never. First, am I going to hit anything right in there? Just close, but I'm going to move those a little bit. Fabric doesn't get twisted up in drill bits. No, not at all. Okay. So you want to go in the very center of that hole. Pretty close. <laughs> okay, look at those little tiny filings. All right, well, <laughs> did we do it? Or did we do it? So it was this one, right? Oh, look, that's not bad. That's exactly where we wanted it. So as long as we get, as long as we get the other side lined out like this, if we measure properly, that's gonna work. That's gonna be really tight for a washer. But it might even be able to get a washer in there. We could go there. So we can even grind the side off of a washer if we have to. That's right. We have the technology. We're not fabricators, but. All right, let's drill the next one. Now, this is going to be. This one I'm gonna drill standing up because there's a raincoat in there. Did I really don't want to get, oh, we forgot our marking nail. <laughs> That's the, the pen. Oh, and the here. pen. <laughs> Where do we put these guys? All right. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna start it here. But there's a, again, a, a very important raincoat down there. I don't really wanna. Which I almost can see. <laughs> like, I don't wanna drill through, so I'm gonna. Well, how do we do? Well, it didn't hit the rib. I think it's pretty good. I can't see on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we're good. We're actually maybe a tiny bit even further on the side, but not much. That's plenty though. All right, beautiful. Well, that is success. That's great. That's gonna work. The mount's gonna fit. So now we just gotta drill the bigger pilot hole, get the brackets on there and seal it, and uh, we're good. <laughs> so we've got the bigger holes drilled and 
what I'd like to say is, especially when you're trying to seal something, the tighter it is, the better. In fact, this one's almost a little too tight. So what we are doing is gonna just thread it through. Like it doesn't fit on its own, So, but it will start, I think. And it does come with this little Allen wrench. Like Tom said, we end up with a lot of those. But check that out. That now is already pretty dang sealed. Don't even need to on use its own. No. Now it's through. So, and it does come with these for the bottom as well, the longer ones. So, man, I I mean, I'm gonna put a little sealer on that, but that that's probably wouldn't leak like that because I've threaded the hole. How cool is that? All right, so we'll get this all mounted up and. And then we'll start dealing with the wiring next. So there's a couple washers. I wouldn't say they're missing, but I like washers on top and bottom. And we had a couple in the drawer. They weren't quite big enough, so we're just going to clamp them and reel this out. Ooh, All right, beautiful. Let's check it, but those are going to be hot to trot. That's, that's tight. Lefty Lucy is what we're trying to do. Let's see if we made our own uh, washers. Perfect. Cool. So now we're going to mount everything down and seal this baby, but I guess we could just do that. So washer on the top. And then this bracket, this little rubber thing that comes with is kind of cool for vibration. It's got like traction on one side, I guess, and smooth the other, but since I want to seal this hole, I'm going to put the smooth side down. And then I guess what we want to do is just put a little bit of the juice on here. So gasket maker is what we're going to use. And I'm just going to put a little bit right around the hole. And with that being threaded already, that should be way tight. That should be very nice and tight. I'll put a little on this side too, just while we're at it. A little bit more maybe, there we go. All right. Some kind of weird thing. As if I need how to, as if I need how to speak better. So we're gonna start that. Gonna start that. Now the other nut, almost in the way, but not quite, so we're good. Shoot, that's so good, we don't even need anything else. Finished. Done. It actually is funny, because it's threaded, so it feels pretty tight. I mean, you know, obviously I'd strip that if I went too tight, but that's awesome. I am, I'm done, we're good. Okay, let's just take a look at this and see how I mean, let me blow that sucker. Looks pretty good, don't you think? I think that looks, I think that looks pretty nice. It's about the right size for this too. You know what I mean? Like it's not overkill and it's curved. So far, Auto Saver 88, this is looking good. I can't wait to see what the brightness is. We're gonna find that out uh, in the dark. Okay, so now we just gotta mount the bolts on the bottom and then figure out the wiring. Is that not right? Sure. <laughs> excitement level is through the roof. Wait, well, yeah, he actually made it exciting twice. I missed it. Oh well. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to imagine it. So take a look at this. Where's my pen? My pen light. Just barely enough. But that's perfect on both sides. We didn't have to break the rib or anything. So we've got this now mounted and it clears just fine no problemo now we got to figure out how to run this wire which seems like there's room down here and get it back through and up into the light housing yeah kind of thing and then wire it in so so far so good let's keep it moving all right the next step is to take this house light assembly shroud housing pod Housing I mean, pod. Lighting pod. Lighting. 
I think that's actually right. It's a lighting puck. Take that apart. We're gonna probably make a run for some wires. You can get this kit with a, a switch. Um, we were gonna hook this up differently, so we are not going to use a switch, but we're gonna need some wires. So keep that in mind when you're picking these out. But we're gonna open this up, see exactly what we need and how much wiring and where to wrap it before we head to the store. So, but this is really cool because again, this part went nice and smooth and I, I, I just really like the look. It's pretty sweet. So, okay, let's get this apart. Quick run to Napa to get this really cool 12 gauge, 12 gauge wire, which is still probably more than necessary, but it comes in this nice, what do you call that? The insulation? I guess insulation. Really cool. So now we're gonna run, I'm gonna follow, let me show you, <clears throat> the pattern or the location that the wires for the winch go. There's a nice cutout even <clears throat> in the plastic for that. And then run it through here, and hopefully right up there. And then we've removed this bracket here and this. Oh, I should mention, there's a few interesting things, rubber clips and rubber bands that you need to pull off to get the light out and to get this off. We didn't film it, but if you want to, <clears throat> you can go back and watch a whole video where we installed power steering on this four-wheeler that's not supposed to be possible, but we did it. And so all of this, everything comes apart on this thing if you want to see that, including this. You can just watch the first part to get this off. So let's get the wire running and then we'll get to the wiring, which is the connecting, I mean after the wiring. Got it fished down here and then turned to come out that side. <clears throat> and then now, we have to see if we can fish this right down that slot, have it come out where we want. Oh, this is hard to do. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put the camera down for a minute, but I'll show you coming out on the other side. Follow it. Follow the light. Walk toward the light. I actually is working really good. Yes. We have done it. Oh, you came in on the other side of that, of where I thought you were coming in. Earlier we were looking on, oops, don't drop that down. Don't drop that down there forever. Earlier we were looking over here, but it came out on the oh, other side. I wasn't That's... even looking at the right spot. I didn't even know what the right spot was, so awesome. The right spot's the one that works. The right, yes it is, that's exactly right. It's the one that works. So, well, I'm gonna grab these and not lose them. For the light assembly shroud thing. So, now we'll get to stripping and connecting and cutting and and that's, we're moving right along. Let's keep it going. We're gonna plug in the heat gun with a magical ceiling cord. Isn't that nice? Go back up a little bit. <laughs> Go back up. I will show you off. There we go. It's really nice to have this. Right there where you need it. Only, only, <laughs> <laughs> only stay down. Okay, so we've got those wires meshed together. You just sort of don't twist them. I have found that, or we have found, I should say, if you just leave them straight and just kind of mesh it in, or if you have room to slide this past a wire and then wrap them together and slide it back, that's good. But if you don't, like we do not here, meshing those together is good. You don't want to do them both at the same time. I don't think so. Okay. I think one at a time is the key. I like to shrink to it first. And do it, do it. Probably another copyright violation. I like to move it, move it. And shrink. Drink it in. Is it doing it? Oh, yeah, let's not melt the camera or your fingers. I think we got it. It's hard to tell. Surely we've gotten it by now. Surely. I have a question for you. What's that? Where's the heat shrink that you're supposed to slide down over it? Oh my gosh. The joy of filming. 
your mistakes <laughs> that I just talked about seconds before. As you can see, that is not slid over this. Son of a biscuit. Well, this is a great learning opportunity. If you do it wrong, you can heat it up and pull back off, hopefully. Don't be like Jake. Don't. Well, be like me and learn from your mistakes. Are you going to try to actually heat that and pull it apart? Yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Aha! There we go. So, now what we're going to do is look to see if that actually soldered. It did, it got some solder on there. Okay, we're going to redo that. We're going to pretend that didn't happen, except it was a good thing so that you can see you can't get them back off. Okay, let's do a retake. Good! Now the shrink tubing, and we've got this. Look at that, looky, looky. Done. Beautiful. Now we shall finish running the wire, splicing that one, and then we'll test the lights after that. So it's getting closer to the more exciting part. So let's keep it moving. We are progressing right along. In fact, we've got this baby wired up into here, which is the bright light, right? So the idea, like we said, is that if you just turn the bright light on, this comes on along with the bride and then you dim it when you see people and your kindness and then you just have a low so we're about to check it out i haven't seen whoo it's dark all right tom turn on the lows you can find <laughs> if them. i can find it <laughs> okay yep check those are still working okay hit it <laughs> that's that's pretty stinking bright oh my gosh you could I could film like this. It'd be like a little too much light, but oh my gosh, that's bright. Very, very bright. Uh, that's exciting. Look at that, it lights up the whole shop. <laughs> well, we don't have, oh wow. So that's the low beams, which I had already turned. Those were, those were LED, which are a lot brighter than the other ones. Flick that back on. Whoo boy. That's going to be awesome. Okay, let's hit the power we'll, we'll finish assembling but so far so good you could tell a spooky story oh that's bright unless you look at the light then you can't see awesome sometimes the right tool for the right job makes all the difference we went down to harbor freight we got these little babies even though this is not a harbor freight video it helped with the installation of the stuff from auto say radiate so these lights have this little rubber band again um there's a clip and then there's a rubber band that goes around it but look how easy that was i fought that with a screwdriver for a lot longer than that so get yourself these these are like what five bucks five I bucks i think it was a dollar 79 dollar 79 and it's worth it and then if you have to do any dental work Ooh. you're good <laughs> okay we're getting the assembly done we're gonna keep it rolling pretty soon we have this baby back together sweet let's keep going well we've gone and done it we got the Shroud, light, case thing, all reassembled, everything works. We've done some little bit extra zip tie attachments here to really secure this because one thing I know for sure is when you're out in the woods, a branch will always find its way somewhere in here. So this is about as tight as we can get it. This has to have some slack, but the nice thing is when you open this like that, see how it pulls up and then it pulls back down. What was that? <laughs> that was just a rock. <laughs> And it stays pretty tight. I mean, again, not that a stick can't find its way in there, but that's almost impossible, I think, to get better than that. And I think it looks pretty darn sharp. Check this out. Pretty dark out, as you can see. That's my low beams. So, you know, that's not bad. And this is a light bar. <laughs> it's like daylight. And what's cool is you can enjoy the trees on the way out. Right? How about that? So, nothing low lights that come and those are upgraded remember and then that let's let's just drive forward a little bit and as you saw that is way bright i'm pretty happy with that i think that looks good so uh, auto save radiate thank you once again for sending us another product we like it we're going to give this a thumbs up and this is an under 50 dollar light bar that's 
a really good value. And it's spot and flood, so they've got all kinds of choices, two row, three row, just one or the other, depending on what you want. And again, we're gonna have that discount code down in the sub, I keep wanting to say subscription, but you can subscribe, but in the description is better. So I'm gonna call that a success. I'm pretty pleased. I can't wait to get this out in the woods and use it and be able to light up those roads. And since it's attached to the dimmer switch with the, well, not the dimmer switch, but yeah, dimmer switch, bright. I can just turn it off anytime I want. So that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little while. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Do something nice. You deserve it. Don't they, Tom? They deserve it. Oh. And you know what else you deserve? You deserve to subscribe to get more awesome content like this. <laughs> and you can thumb up, ask any questions if you want. Thanks so much for hanging us out. We're going to take you out with the patent pending fish bump of friendship. Whoop out! So let's keep it moving. Which I like to say a lot, apparently, on this particular video. Keep it moving. Where's the rubber baby buggy bumper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why is the camera zooming in? Is it time for my close up? Is this my good side? They're both good sides. <laughs> Sure. A picture. GoPros are cool, but sometimes if you're not paying attention, you click a power button. It's not really the power unless you hold it down. It changes it from photo to video. Not that I would know why that's bad. So taking pictures. No, that's filming. We're good now. Whoop out! I felt pretty good about that one. Okay. <laughs> and cut!